purpose of the talk today is about integrating teams. So we've got product UX, DevOps, and I'll, I'll start with you, Ross, because you have it in, in microphone in your hand. DevOps is at the end of the delivery cycle, I guess it's the releasing part. How close are your teams in terms of interacting with product and UX and understanding from a DevOps perspective all the insights and the research that goes on into the, the work that you deliver? Right, so um, at, at DICE we've got a, a whole division which is focusing on uh, research and prototyping. Uh, and we uh, also build those prototypes. So we're involved like right at the very beginning of the process of like creating new games, creating uh, new ways of playing, uh, or you know like using new features or uh, implementing new content as well. So we interact directly with um, the content creators and uh, other technology folk who are uh, and the product uh, directors in terms of. Where does this product wants to, wants to go, and what sort of new new features can we can we build? Excellent. And Anna Karen, can I ask you the same? So you're coming from the UX side. So how integrated are you with your developers and your your DevOps teams right at the start of, of a product? Uh, we always start with user research, uh, and we try to involve uh, also the developer in that uh, uh, research phase, especially when it comes to prototyping <coughs> and. and kind of direction the project is going. Excellent. And Anna, from your perspective? Um, well, we try different approaches at iZettle. Um, first of all, you have to understand that every team in our company works differently, so they uh, choose what suits them the best, uh, meaning they're still delivering the results, but they organize around uh, these uh, values or those missions in the way they want to work. So if they want to do heavy UX research up front, they are free to do it. And uh, we try to do it, but for my team specifically, um, and for several other teams, it, it didn't work. So um, we are what you call integrated team, or I would say cross-functional and quite autonomous team. And um, right now, uh, UX and design, as well as um, uh, developers and analysts, agile coach, they're all uh, team members of the same team. So they're. 100% dedicated to the same team and they're working towards the same mission. It means when we're going out to talk to our customers and uh, we're doing some research, uh, everyone participates. Everyone who is available at the moment participates. So uh, let's say we need to do uh, a survey with uh, some customers and the UX person might go there with engineer uh, because this engineer is available and also trying to achieve the same goal. So I would say fully integrated, but yeah. Excellent. Uh, Can I add something? Go for it. And we also try the part that we actually involve uh, the developers in, in the user research and usability testing to, to, to watch or actually being part of the analysis, which is a very good thing to do because then they feel a, a bigger on, on ownership. And you touched on it there actually a second, uh, Anna, that it didn't quite work. So one of the things I always find is when you hear stories about it, how companies are working, everything's perfect and everything's working great. <laughs> but the reality is always a little bit less clean and tidy in the background. So can you share some of the challenges um, that you found with, with that kind of autonomous and, and um, product teams? I would say if we, if we put it into one challenge, then probably making the team accepting the fact that we have one shared backlog. So the team working towards one backlog, which is a representation of our mission, so basically how we're going to uh, achieve those goals or missions, and making the organization understand that this backlog is like one solid thing, and that the prioritization of this backlog goes by the product manager together with the team. So, um, because that's very like, um, it sounds like an easy thing, but the main challenge here is that um, eventually uh, everyone in the team starting to like think like, well, my chapter would like to deliver something, you know, for the sake of a platform or like uh, my peers uh, in the UX group doing this amazing research, uh, I would like to join, you know, like, no, like, <laughs> 
<laughs> you you might, <laughs> but that has to be accepted by the entire team and it has to be aligned with our missions. Because if it's not, then people starting to work on many different things and uh, you're never going to reach your goals. So uh, as soon as your team members accept the thing that uh, by bringing a small thing or by introducing a new thing to the uh, backlog, uh, I might actually put the entire sprint at risk. Uh, if they start thinking this way, like uh, then they immediately starting to say no to a lot of uh, things which are coming from the side. And it's a big challenge because it's a lot of collaboration and communication and it's a lot of conflicts as well. Thank you. Um, Ross, sir, okay. Uh, yeah, I can, I can speak to that. Um, at, at DICE, we're about two years into our organizational transformation um, to deliver games faster to, to players. Um, and one of the biggest challenges that, that my team faces is that uh, when, when, when the process that it exists doesn't work for us, um, we just throw it away. And, um, and we try and find something that works like specifically for us, um, uh, sometimes with success and sometimes with, with failures. Um, and our challenge in that is, is about communicating outwards to the rest of the organization to say like, hey, this, this thing that, we, that everyone else is doing just doesn't work for, for this new team that you've created, right? And, and, and we're um, one of the key uh, teams in, in this organizational transformation, and, uh, and a lot of the other teams just don't get why. Well, this this way that we always used to work, uh, that everyone is is, is is very accustomed to, is is just not suitable anymore, right? Um, and I think it again, it comes down to to communication, right? Uh, that's that's definitely one of our key challenges. Do, do you have any examples of something you threw out? Uh, yeah, we we don't keep the backlog anymore. Um, we just work on <laughs> like the most important thing at, at the time. Um, we found that, uh, well, our team was specifically under a huge amount of pressure um, and maybe a little under-resourced. So our backlog just kept on growing and growing and growing. Um, so we, it, it was just management overhead to, to do any, any, any effort there. Uh, so, so we just stopped. Um, and started like sort of working on our own stuff, um, and that has just been super successful. Uh, we rallied the whole team around um, our core motto, which is to help dice ship games, and everything that doesn't align with that, we just don't do. Um, and, and I think that's taken the rest of, or of the organization a, a, a lot of effort to to understand, and, and we did just a terrible job of communicating that to the organization at the time, uh, which I take full responsibility for. <laughs> <laughs> You're the expression, the bad dog is where features go to die. Yeah, it, it, exactly. I think um, that, that definitely uh, is, is, is what happened to us, and, and, and there's, there's a whole bunch of other examples that I can think of uh, over pints and pizza. <laughs> Excellent. Anna Karen, do you have examples of challenges that you face? It's not all rosy on the inside. <laughs> no, definitely not. Uh, I, I was thinking about it from a uh, user experience perspective is when you do the usability testing and you realize that you have to start to, to do some major design decisions and start all over again and the developer has started maybe or something like that. Uh, so I think that's a challenge, how you prioritize that and also how you really uh, fit that into the roadmap. Excellent. And just touching on A-B testing there actually, so because um, it's kind of, A-B testing can happen at both ends of the cycle. You can A-B test before you build something and then it, you A-B test after you've released to production. So it kind of touches across all areas. So what are the, and, and it's kind of tying in with the theme of hypothesis driven development. So what challenges specifically, you've touched on kind of a challenge there, is there anything else that you find with ABs, particularly if you don't get the results you're expecting or something like that? Yeah, we, we always try to do usability te testing and use research, but then we also try, uh, we also do A-B testing and the challenges with A-B testing is really when it's negative, so you have to take it back and, and you, then you start the design process again um, and, and trying to figure out also why why it's negative. Um, 
which which is a lot of discussions. Anna, um, well, I, I would say my team in the whole ASATL is the team who runs the most A/B test. Alex is smiling because he used to be working with us. He was like uh, actually building a lot of um, funda foundations for how we run A/B tests. Uh, but the thing is, like. Um, uh, you earlier said this, like when you go from zero to uh, two A-B tests, that's the hardest journey, you know, like when you scale from two to many, it's much simpler. So, um, yeah, we've successfully, I would say, managed this journey from zero to two. Um, and um, our biggest challenge was actually uh, how to allocate those uh, customer journeys to a specific group of customers. We didn't want them to experience different parts of A-B test. You know, like if you're in a group A, we don't want you out of uh, sudden, you know, see uh, a flow from the group B or from the C, E, whatever, how many flows we have. And uh, we didn't find any tools out there which will help us to actually distribute those different journeys. So we needed to invest quite heavily into our own infrastructure and we built the internal tool, experimenter we call it, which is like right at the moment of your registration when you create account uh, uh, actually assign a specific journey which follow you through the entire lifetime with Izetal and uh, that was kind of uh, a game changer because before we were spending so much time in understanding okay this conversion looks better than that but what the specific user actually saw, like what kind of steps they completed, where they spent the longest time, and um, how, uh, what, what to do next, you know, with those kind of users. And uh, yeah, I guess it comes with your uh, prioritization, like if you're willing to prioritize this kind of stuff in your backlog or in your <laughs> sprint, <laughs> then um, you're gonna end up with something. Uh, but maybe it doesn't work for everyone, you know, like maybe not everyone need that many tests. So, so just with the, you said it, it keeps with somebody through their entire journey. Yeah. How do you manage them? Like, so you've run a few tests, now you want to, to roll it out, so does, does that finish? Or how, how do you over time? Because if tests are going to keep multiplying and multiplying over uh, time. This is very, very good uh, <laughs> question. Um, well, when we decide what to do with a specific group, we are um, almost always uh, trying to think not just about A and B, but also who is like in the middle of some journey. So in, in the fact it's ending up with multiple groups, like we need to finish their experiment at some point. And um, with that, we actually, it's, it's not always been like this because we once had a huge failure like we were running an experiment on the market with a... Uh, do you have time for this? <laughs> <laughs> Can anybody smell pizza yet? <laughs> yeah. So we were running an experiment uh, on a specific market where we were removing uh, one of the steps of onboarding. And usually removal is uh, more happy than introducing something because you actually killing something. I'm super excited about it, usually. <laughs> so um, the experiment went quite well and it was uh, clearly visible that we need to roll out the uh, experimental flow to the entire user base. Uh, but there was a group of users who were between chairs. They started this step uh, like five years ago, let's say, during the five years, and they never finished it. And uh, that's where my favorite example of five minute things come up. Like there is no five minute things in product development, you know. Like um, one of our developers were sitting with our stakeholder and they were happily discussing what to do next and they decided to do a cleanup. So they decided to change the status of those users who were in between chairs, who changed the to, to change their status from pending to okay which was done immediately because it's just a five minute thing. So this five minute thing ended up in a three weeks cleanup and like our support lines were overloaded and everything. 
um, from a user perspective it looked like this. You started with iZettle maybe five years ago, you were stuck in onboarding somewhere, you collected five kronas from your customer, never finished onboarding and forgot about us. And five years after, boom, five kronas ending up on, <laughs> landing up on your account. So five minute thing ended up in a huge disaster and uh, that's what we joke around, like there's no five minute thing in product development. Very true. Uh, just touching on the same topic, but coming out from the, the side, so you, you built your own product to manage these A-B tests in, in iZettle. How, how do you manage them from a technical perspective at DICE? Yeah, I, th I think there's, there's there's many strategies here. Um, and I think, uh, Anna, Anna touched on it uh, earlier, from the technical perspective, going from zero to introducing one A-B test is actually the, the, the significant uh, amount, of, amount of work, right? You need to start building up all the technology to support this um, uh, long before you can launch your first A-B test. And once you have that uh, created, you've actually gone through that journey of like, how do we, how do we run a test? How do we <laughs> measure some data? Like, how do we even interpret any of this data? And then going from, okay, we've got one successful test to now we're going to launch out like three or four simultaneous tests, right? That that then becomes way easier over time, uh, and then you get into the Izettle uh, situation where you've got hundreds of tests running uh, concurrently all, all the time. Right? Um, did I answer uh, any question? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, touch on it. Yeah. Okay. The smell of pizza. Yeah. So we are over time, but.